is getting ready to go green. That's Cole Custer on the outside, the two of Tim Sendrick's son, Austin Sendrick, on the inside in that blue truck. And we are green and racing in Canada. That on board, I'm all right, Timothy Peters. Right side, right side, go there. Spotters play a key role, these guys knowing when they can hit the corners. Upwards of three, four spotters per truck around this track of flats. It's so difficult to see around it. Throughout the course of the weekend, we thought the first three trucks have shown themselves to be the strongest. Cole Custer, Daniel Hemrick, Austin Sendrick, and they are one, two, three. Right now, as we ride on board with Cameron Haley, who's back in that sixth spot. There's a couple other guys right now in the top five that also showed some speed in practice. William Byron and Kaz Grala. William in that nine truck running fourth. Kaz, a limited schedule this year, running in the fifth spot, 17 years old. A couple of teenagers back on there inside the top five. Our top five average age, 19 years old. Top 10 was 20 years old. This sport is all about you. you see one of the veterans there, Johnny Sauter, racing down the inside of that long Mario Andretti straightaway. Still trying to sort themselves out too wide going into turn eight. Not a lot of room down there as you see Cole Custer coming around completing the first lap as he comes through 10 and on the front straightaway. Cole Custer leads the first lap. You see him 24. Looked like he and Matt Crafton got together a little bit. Kaz, I think, may have turned it right to avoid. Really got in and got the 13. Those are teammates. And Gary Klute got a piece of that as well with a 51 truck. Take another view, look at the top, top of your screen. The 81 of Ryan oh. Truex. In the eight, the restart. It's overtime in Canada. Amachek <laughs> spin the tires. Custer got a great start, and Gallagher moves into second. So the top two, Cole Custer and Spencer Gallagher win and you're in the chase and remember this is overtime they got to get to turn three get past that overtime line there's turn two custer is down there headed towards turn three a lot of blocking going on their mid pack and they have crossed the overtime line what about spencer gallagher he knows a chance to race for the truck series championship is just out his windshield will he put the bumper to our leader this is the place to do it if you're going to do it right here in turn five. The slowest part of the racetrack. Custer got through there better than Gallagher did. Custer gaps him a little bit. John Hunter Nemechek now inside of Gallagher. Gallagher doesn't want to let Nemechek get in there or he won't have a chance to get to Custer. We're going to have a left-hander coming up here. Nemechek has that spot now. A big move. And now Cedric rubbing doors with Spencer Gallagher. Spencer clears Cedric. John Hunter's got his sights set on Cole Custer. Around, Around goes Gallagher. Gallagher. And Cole Custer is coming to get the white flag. One lap to go. Spencer Gallagher is going to get his truck refired down in turn 10. Gallagher went around off the front bumper of the two of Cedric. Now can John Hunter Nemechek catch Cole Custer? Remember, if Custer wins, he secures a spot in the chase. Nemechek's already got that spot locked up. He's looking for win number two of the season. There's nobody going to run this lap any harder than John Hunter Nemechek. It's the last lap at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and Cole Custer trying to hold out out. for the win. In the turn five, Custer gets through it. Nemechek's gained a little bit of ground on him here, off of five. This is a tough corner we're coming to. If Cole, Cole Custer is concerned with it all, John Hunter Nemechek can get there. Under the bridge, coming to turn eight. Nemechek right on the bumper of Cole Custer. Custer getting through. Here they come through turn nine. Nemechek gives him a little bump. Custer hanging on. Nemechek gets into it. John Hunter Nemechek and Cole Custer, they're rocking and spinning, coming to the line. Oh my God. Who is it going to be? Side by side through the grass. Oh I think it looked like.
like Nemec. It looked like Nemechek to me, but I'm not sure. Was, did Hemrick get by both of them? I'm not sure anybody knows who crossed the line first. Waiting on NASCAR to make the official call. John Hunter Nemechek and Cole Custer were off the track in the grass when they crossed the area of the start-finish line. What is and Daniel Hemrick actually came through on the track to cross the line first, but who's going to be declared the winner? And remember, if Hemrick wins, he locks himself into the chase as well. Wow. Just when you think you've seen it all. Well, we start at the very top of the show, Michael. We talked about the two the finishes we've had here. We felt like it would come down to that last corner once again. And that's exactly what happened. NASCAR officials still trying to determine as they look at the replays, who's going to be declared the winner? Well, John Hunter Nemechek tried to move Cole Custer out as they came through 9 and 10, some contact. I tell you what, this, uh, this last corner has set up some crazy finishes. We saw one of the most amazing passes ever by Ryan Blaney to win it. And then a couple of guys that just decided to put the bumper to each other. Without contact, by the way. Ryan Blaney's pass was without contact. And that's my favorite one by far. Today was, uh, was a little bit dramatic. Jerry Kennan waiting on official word. We have not yet been told who is the winner. It looked like from our angle, Vince, that it was John Hunter Nemechek. But, but I'm not sure where Hemrick was when all that was going on. Because I think Austin Centric was going around in the last corner as well. Somebody told John Hunter he won. John Hunter Nemechek is doing the burnouts, but just want to reiterate, we have not yet been told from NASCAR which driver is the winner. But obviously John Hunter believes he's the one. Crazy finish. Yeah, that's here a, today. That, that was a little bit over the top, I think, with the with the pushing and shoving uh, coming in the last corner. But we've seen it before, and we'll we'll see it again. I think the golden rule is you want to you, you race people like you want to be raced. So. Still waiting as the, uh, the NASCAR officials are in the room right next to us and they are still studying the videotape and taking a look. The official decision has not yet come down. Trying to determine as they look at replay over replay who crossed the finish line first. John Hunter Nemechek wants the flag, and they're not going to give it to him yet. Oh, now we got Paul Custer and Nemechek. Paul mm -hmm. Custer did not like the way that race ended. Did not like the way John Hunter Nemechek moved him. you talked about racing people the way you want to be raced as John Hunter Nemechek heads into the chase for the championship this fall you've got a guy like Cole Custer that feels like he'd been done wrong that could end your chase a little bit prematurely yeah that may you may make it a mission to make sure that eight truck doesn't go very far in the chase because it felt like he was certainly wrong there and remember John Hunter Nemechek already had a spot at the chase Cole Custer that was his opportunity let's go downstairs and Check in with Hermie Sadler. He's with Cole Custer. Well, a lot of emotion. Uh, your thoughts uh, the last lap and uh, after the race? Uh, we had a really fast truck. Just uh, got taken out. He hit me going into the second to last corner. 
and they hit me again. So I don't know what else to do. But that's how it is, I guess. NASCAR has not announced the winner of the race. What has your team told you, if anything? I don't know. They don't have a picture of it, but I felt like we were even with them or ahead of them. So I don't know what to tell you. It's cold, Custer. A lot of emotion, a lot on the line as we wait for NASCAR's decision. Thanks. Well, the race has been over almost five minutes now and still not a winner determined. Yeah, I'm going I'm to call the eight a winner from the video we just saw. Yeah. He was definitely ahead of the double zero Cole Custer when they got to the line and looked like they both were ahead of maybe the 19 of Hemrick. You think possibly NASCAR is considering any sort of uh, penalty for for what happened here? You can see the, the truck on the right is looks like about a half a foot or so ahead. Looks the, like the start-finish line right there, doesn't it, guys? And the eight of John Hunter Nemechek is just a little bit ahead. As you see, that thick white line is the finish line, and that certainly looks to be the eight at that point. But again, NASCAR has not officially announced a winner. NASCAR, remember years ago at, uh, at Sonoma, at Sonoma, yeah, they Ricky Rudd knocked Davey Allison out of the way, I think. Yes, and they and they penalized him a, 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 a time penalty, and that allowed Ricky Rudd to, to win that race, even though he was turned around there when they got to the to the last corner there at Sonoma. They had a, he had a big enough gap over third that uh, Ricky Rudd was able to get.